to the Kamala Harris point that I was making, uh, she is so weak and insecure, she is now freaking out about the Gavin Newsom, Ron DeSantis debate. Let's put this up there on the screen. It really is just absolutely hilarious. Kamala Harris allies are, quote, privately grumbling that Gavin Newsom's plan to debate Ron DeSantis is, quote, disrespectful to the VP as they see the move as early jockeying for 2028. I mean, they're not wrong um, in that. Is it disrespectful? <laughs> well, I mean, maybe it's realistic. Even a guy as unpopular as Gavin Newsom is probably more popular and electable as Kamala Harris, the least popular vice president in all of modern American history. And the funny thing is, is that this debate, you know, of which has yet to been, has been agreed to by both sides, but has not yet uh, officially materialized, which we're about to get into, is quite obviously Newsom trying to plant his flag as a, a, pers a, 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 a possible Biden alternative should something happen to Biden. It is a shot at Kamala Harris, but it's not disrespectful, Crystal. He's shooting a sh like he got DeSantis to agree to the debate. I actually think it's a brilliant move for both of them because it's a decent amount of earned media, but it's an implicit acknowledgement, really, by the Harris camp that Newsom is actually far more formidable as a candidate, at least in that lane, than Kamala Harris is. I mean, his overall favorability and all of that, I'm not going to say it's high, especially amongst Republicans. I don't think he has a particularly good record exactly he can run on. But again, when we're comparing it, the two, it's obvious that he's strong enough, and it shows you a little bit of a preview of 2028 of what they want to do, which is use identity politics to anoint her as the queen to be able to take the nomination in 2028 and keep and bar out every single other person. Mm -hmm. And if you do challenge her in any way, then you're disrespecting the first black female vice president. You know, Newsom had an interview, a, you know, contentious interview debate, I guess you could say, with Sean Hannity yep. that actually went really well for him, even with, you know, the Fox News audience. Like, he gained a lot, a lot of respect, I think, because of his ability to handle that exchange in a relatively effective way. And so that was the genesis of this idea of him debating DeSantis and having Sean Hannity um, moderate that. And so... You know, I would just say, like, actually, it is kind of disrespectful to Kamala Harris, but you don't garner respect by just, like, being like, you must respect me. You have to earn it. And so, yeah, Gavin Newsom and about a thousand other ambitious Democrats see you as weak. And they are all positioning and circling like vultures, waiting for their chance in probably 2028 to be able to jump in the fray and be the next in line. There was a different universe in which she was, you know, a much stronger, much more compelling figure with a lot more admiration and higher favorability ratings among the American public, where 2028, if Biden were to get reelected, would be a foregone conclusion that she would basically be the next in line and be the nominee. That ship has sailed. It is not going to be that way. And they can try all of the identity politics that they want to. There are going to be a lot of candidates who jump into that race. There are going to be governors. There are going to be senators. There's going to be Pete Buttigieg, all kinds of cast of characters who are not going to be put off whatsoever by this, you know, currently very weak vice presidential candidate. So, yeah, in a sense, it is kind of disrespectful. But guess what? That's because you haven't exhibited the kind of strength that would dissuade people from trying to edge you out and take that place. So listen, that's politics, right? Yeah. That's life. And uh, you know, there's some also a little bit of grumbling even from Biden advisors who feel the debate could boost DeSantis. And they're now they now are like, you know, they still, I guess, think that Trump will be a weaker candidate than DeSantis. They don't want to boost DeSantis, which is kind of interesting to me because I don't know, I'm not sure that. DeSantis really would be a stronger candidate than Trump. Who knows? Yeah. Hard to say. But anyway, they're also worried that it could give the impression that there is a contested primary going on. Trust me, I think that they've uh, done their best to close that door and make it clear to all Democratic voters that you have no choice. You must stick with Joe Biden. So they're worried about that as well. But I don't know. The hand wringing over it is kind of interesting and revealing to me. The other question is that whether this debate is even going to happen because there's been some roadblocks in terms of in, in coming to terms over what the rules of this debate would be. You can put this up on the screen from Politico. Apparently, the big questions here are about who would be in the audience. Um, they want at Fox, and I think DeSantis wants like a live studio audience, and they propose that it be split evenly between the two candidates, but Newsom, I think, understandably fears that that would be overwhelmingly tilted toward the Republican side because right. it's Fox News, and so he doesn't want to have the live audience. He wants it just to be 
him and DeSantis and Sean Hannity. So they're still sort of negotiating some of those details. Who knows if this even is going to come together. I It'll be it fun happens. content. I, I want to watch it, yeah, right? I think, it's, yeah. I think it's good. I think more people should do this. I mean, you have two competing visions here of people who are like B-tier uh, politicians in terms of who dominates the national stage. But you've got two of the most populous states in the entire country. Newsom affirmatively has a vision for California. I disagree with that vision. Ron DeSantis has an affirmative vision for Florida. Both want the rest of the country to look more like their states. They have very dynamic economies. I mean, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a good thing. It's yeah. one of those where actually we would all be better served for. They can argue about crime. They can argue about whatever, books and uh, libraries and trans and all that. And you know what? In many respects, it's even more consequential because they have actual governing power and influence over their state legislatures yeah. that actually impact the millions of people who live in those states. So I think it's a great idea. Uh, I really do. And uh, I hope it goes uh, forward. I, I almost am on the Newsom side where take out the live debate just because I want more of the debate than the cheering. It'd yeah. be better. And the audience, right. I mean, th their stance is like, we don't want to have this like cheerleading yeah. section. I, right. I agree with I agree that. With like that. it'd be better if you just have the questions, the viewing audience can yeah. judge for themselves rather than try to pump up one side or the other with whoever is in, happens to be in the room. So I do think it would be better that way. But anyway, I hope they can come to terms because it'd be interesting to watch. Because like you said, they both have implemented very different agendas in their states. They have very different you know records that they can contrast. And I think they would both, you know, ably handle themselves in terms of articulating their own vision. And it would be interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So, again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.